There's only so many times that you can photograph similar things in the same way and I think it's time for me to try and be more creative. That's what I'm going to do today, is just try and push myself more creatively. This is often a really good spot for damselflies and dragonflies, so I'm just trying to find something here, hopefully, that I can work on. There's plenty of stuff out there. The problem is that I just, I'm not finding anything I can get close enough to. So to, to be more creative, I've got to get up close. That's what I want to do. And everything's just a bit far out. I have found an emerald damselfly and it's in a good position. I can get very close to it. It's kind of shooting towards the light, which should work pretty well. And I think I'm going to be able to try some different techniques with this. First time wearing the knee pads, I forgot to bring them last time. Uh, just trying to make my life a little bit easier, a bit more comfortable. Now I am largely shooting into the light and the sun is actually trying to break through so it's getting brighter all the time. Um, I've done a, a side on shot of the Emerald Damselfly just initially because that's kind of the image that I'd usually take and most people probably do and I've done videos on you know how to do that and get flat and maximise depth of field which is definitely a good thing, I'm not saying it's a bad thing and I've taken just a quick shot of that just so I've got that shot in the bag if you like. Um, but what I'm trying to do now is just look at focusing in different places um, and well, it's a little bit bright maybe and then um, focusing on different areas because do you have to focus in the same place all the time? A photography is, it's your thing, you know, you do what you want to do and what you like and what makes you happy. Now I've tried this before uh, but I want to do it more today and that is to just try focusing in different areas on the insect to try and make it a little bit more abstract. I'm going to try and focus on the head, focus on the wing, maybe the wing tip, uh, maybe the tail. Do you know, it's so easy to miss things sometimes, as I have done here. Um, just been shooting that, you know, taking quite a lot of shots because it's really hard to keep everything sharp. And I've noticed there's a there's another stem behind it and it's like running right through the damselfly, which is not I don't really like the look of that at all. So um what I'm gonna do is try and uh move my position, just come over more to the left to, um, to try and hide that stem behind the stem that damselfly's on. And then uh, yeah, hopefully it won't show up. I think so much of this is to do with the angles. It's all about angles, really. It's about you know where you approach from and the angle that you want to get the effect that you're after. This is actually really interesting, just trying this different type of focusing. Um, I'm finding that you, if you focus on the wings, you get quite an interesting effect. You know, you can focus on the foreground wings or you can focus on the background wings and it can give uh, just a, a bit more of an impressionistic kind of feel to it. And what I'm going to do is to try and actually focus on the wing tip. On these damselflies, and a lot of damselflies and dragonflies, I think, they have a, like on these ones, they've got a little black bit right on the tip of the wing. So I'm going to try and focus exactly on that, as accurate as I can. If you're enjoying this content and you're new to this channel, then please do consider subscribing. It really, really helps the channel. Right, I found another one, and this one is, is right on the edge here. It's in a better position. I can get closer to it. At the moment, it's kind of, it's, it's back is angled almost, you know, towards where I am. So that means I'm going to try and shoot it um, from above, just looking straight down. And I'm going to try the different uh, focus. Is it differential focusing? Is that, is that what they call it? But rather than just try and get all the insects, you know, most of the insects fairly sharp, as I usually would. So I think with this style of photography, where you're trying to do this with the insects, shallow depth of field, 
more abstract looked. I think it's better just to go in closer. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to bring my manual focus closer a little bit so I can go in closer to the insect. That's going to diffuse the background more. It's going to make more of the insect out of focus. Kind of the exact opposite of what I'd usually do. I realized that that just wasn't going to work for what I was after because uh, I wanted to again to focus on just one area of the body I wanted the other parts of the body to be out of focus so being up there that's better for your depth of field throughout the whole insect but what I actually did was come lower down so I came much lower down similar to the same level as the damselfly actually and then I was able to selectively focus and that works so much better the idea is that you're, you're focusing on one area of the damselfly which is nice and clear and show that detail uh, but you still sort of leave the other areas of the damselfly uh, as an impression you can clearly see the shapes just that they're out of focus I'll do another video on this because this is something fairly new to me I'm really enjoying it actually uh, but I don't feel I can necessarily explain all the technical aspects in the best way today I'm just really just trying it out and seeing what I like <laughs> I really like in that sort of uh, that abstract effect and I've got some beautiful backgrounds the color is an absolute bonus so I've got like um, with the the light blue emerald damselfly I've got a really nice bright yellow background so that's a lovely lovely contrast and I can already see looking at this I'm zooming in to check the sharpness uh, but it's also making me think of cropping it you know I could crop some of these images down in a certain way uh, to give the, sh the overall shape and design of the picture that I'm after. Now I'd love to know if you actually do this type of photography, if you tried it, this kind of style, uh, or do you prefer just getting all of the insects nice and sharp? Let me know in the comments box below. To be honest, I've really struggled this morning um, taking these pictures. And the main thing is I've just, I've really struggled to get sharp pictures. I've been having to take loads to get anything pin sharp. Um, and I think that's partly just the positions that you have to be in, which I've had to be in today. And this soft ground, it means it's harder to keep your, your body stable and you always feel a little bit of movement. And yeah, it's just been really, really tough. Um, I actually reverted to autofocus, which I don't use generally for these shots, but I was just getting such a terrible hit rate that I actually switched to autofocus servo um, on those last shots on the back of the damselfly and I got a better success rate instantly so maybe some days are just different to others some days you're more tired you hold yourself more still I don't know but yeah it's been a real struggle what I really wanted to do there was to try and get um, a shot where the head around the head maybe the eye and the wingtip are in focus so to try and sort of position the camera um, again with that shallow depth of field but to get those two points in focus so rather than just one now I just I didn't really have time to do that and it's getting warmer everything's getting more active so I just didn't do it today but I do have some that I can share with you because I tried this I don't know, a couple of weeks ago when I was down here and I did exactly that so I'll put those up on the screen for you now I got so much out of that today. I really, really enjoyed that shoot, just kind of more abstract imagery. Really, really enjoyed it. Now, everything today I've shot has been with a 100 millimeter macro lens. But if you don't have a macro lens and you just wanted to get into macro photography, then another option is to use extension tubes. Now, if you want to learn how to use extension tubes, what they are, compatibility, everything about them, then check the video link that's up on the screen. Uh, put me a comment on there as well if you find it useful, would be fantastic. And thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon in another video nobody talks about how exhausting it is this this style of handheld insect photography I find it, it can be really really tiring it's still enjoyable <laughs>